Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? It's Jeffrey Pot from, from the Open People Network or OPN.ninja. And today we are at the Up Sales Talks in Whippy. And we had a great talk today. And I'm really excited to introduce you guys to Audrey from the Marketing Kitchen. And I think Audrey you did a fantastic job. You really engaged everybody. One of the people in the audience really made a, a great comment that you really showed your personality. And everybody in this room is going to remember that. And I think that was probably key to obviously how you sell and how you get in front of people. It's very engaging. And one of the questions I had was um, when it comes to the comment you made about lists, should we create lists? Are lists needed? How does that make me a successful salesperson? And I'd just love to get some more insight into that. Well, you need to create a list because you need to know who you're going to go after. You've got to have a hit list. So you've got to figure out who do I want um, to have as a client. And, you know, it doesn't have to be all from one industry, but you, you, have to, you have to be focused. You have to go, okay, here are the 25 customers I would love to have. And you got to make a list. You got to, uh, you know, put them in Excel, put them in a CRM, put them somewhere. Figure out who you want. Like for me, I sell direct marketing production services. It's easy for me to make a list. I go to my mailbox. I pull out all the direct mail. I sort it by who I would want my customer to be. And I say, okay, I'm going to go after that. I want, you know, Mervish Productions or I want Wayfair. And and they go on my list. I have a folder right in my office that says prospects and as soon as I get a piece of direct mail that I want to be doing I put it in there and then you know when I get some time I add them to the list and then I figure out how I'm gonna find out who the person is there that makes that decision on who gets to produce it are they using an ad agency so making a list is really just about always looking for prospects and who you want them to be and then put them in something to keep track of them. And, and I really believe that if you go after 20 people, you'll get an appointment with one, you know, probably two. So I think you just gotta be looking out to say, who, who do I want my customer to be? Who is my customer? Um, who can I service well? And then just start writing those companies down and then start figuring out a way to get the right contact person. No, that's great. It's, it kind of sounds like trading cards. Yeah. Got them, got them, need them, yeah. got them, got them, need them. Want that person, okay, writing that person down. Because you're going to forget, right? You're busy. So you're going to forget to, oh, yeah, I wanted to prospect that person. You've got to get one centralized area where you're going to put your hit list. And then, you know, spend some time on it, spend some time on it, but don't beat a dead horse. you got to know when to abandon ship and, and move on to fresh prospects. Well, oh, that's amazing. Uh, and the next thing that I'm curious about, I actually really, really enjoyed too, is that you said, when you're calling somebody, smile. And I was told a long time ago, um, when it came to filming or anything, just smile, make yourself smile in your own mind, you'll eventually start smiling because that will come across. Um, is there anything else that you would add into that that really helps you when you are calling or emailing or doing something that keeps you engaged in what you're doing? Um, I, I know it's gonna sound funny, but you gotta take a deep breath, you just gotta go, <sighs> okay, I can do this. Nobody wants to get on the phone and make a cold call, right? Because you know the other person on the other phone doesn't want to take your call. So you just kind of get yourself in the, the right mindset. Um, bring up your energy level. If you're having kind of a down, low energy day, which we all have, that's not a good cold calling day. That's a strategy day. That's a make a list day, right? Oh, okay. when, and and you, um, <clears throat> you can always find new business when you don't need new business because your confidence is confidence is at an ultimate high. So when I'm super busy and people are calling me and I'm getting referrals, that is the best time for me to prospect because you are not going to say no to me because I am on a high, right? I, 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 everyone wants to do business with me. Why wouldn't you? And that confident, you project that confidence. And, and that's when you should go after new business. They always say, try and get new business when you don't need it because when you really need it, you actually can sound a bit desperate. You're like, oh my God, I, I got nothing. We got nothing in the funnel next month. Oh my God, people can hear that in your voice. So... That's some great advice. Uh, last question. Uh, what's in store for you in 2019? Um, well, more good stuff, um, pleasing customers. Um, we're growing and we're getting a really great reputation out there. Um, I'm looking at some new equipment. I, I really want to get into buy a big, big investment inkjet press um, uh, because it's really evolving. Um, I'm, I'm building a software um, solution um, for the front end of my production docket system so that anybody can run a direct mail campaign, even if you never have. I'm going to try and simplify the whole front end customer service process with this amazing web portal um, and then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna try and expand on that whole front-end customer experience get all the information 
Like I said, people are running a lot of digital campaigns and they don't know how to run a direct mail campaign. So I want them to be able to just place the campaign through my portal and learn everything they need to know and I can get all their information. So I've got a, a couple areas to focus on, but the main focus is keeping our existing customers happy and, and getting new customers into the mix. Mail is not dead. It is a great complement to all other types of media. It just has to be used correctly and you just have to be creative and have some fun with it. So. Well, that's amazing, and I appreciate all your time, Audrey. I think everybody here loved what you had to say. I think you had some great uh, anecdotes and ways to solve problems, and your energy is amazing, so don't change. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for joining us uh, from BACD, uh, the town of Whippy, and Audrey at the Marketing Kitchen, and OPN. Thank you very much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you guys next month with Russ Montague. Thank you. He's our partner, uh, along with JP Pockvin from uh, OPN Ninja and uh, Frank. We're all partners in bringing these events to you. Jen has some things to talk about. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Teresa. Yes, uh, Daniel Van Kampen. Thanks for uh, coming out this morning. I really enjoy uh, hosting these uh, these events. Uh, a lot of learning, a lot of good networking. Uh, some good relationships uh, have happened, uh, and, and deals have happened uh, as well. I uh, just wanted to direct your attention to uh, something that's coming up in a couple weeks, uh, Digital Durham. It's a, there's a Digital Durham Symposium. Actually, just last, uh, last year, we uh, launched the uh, program um, on this day, and it's about integrating new digital technologies into your, your company. Um, this is the, uh, the Digital Symposium is uh, a full day, intense, uh, we've got a whole series of, uh, of workshop speakers. Some of them include uh, Andy Bruce from Mobile Exco, provides uh, marketing solutions for, for companies using uh, text messaging. GeekSpeak uh, is also on deck. Um, and they, they'll talk about uh, e-commerce, uh, developing an e-commerce strategy. Uh, so that's gonna be November the 1st. It's right here in this, uh, this location. Um, go to digitaldurham.ca and uh, there's a registration as well for, uh, for the symposium. Hope to see you there. Thanks for coming. Awesome. There's one flyer on each table because we run out. So please take a picture because you don't need the paper anyway. And then go and register for the event. Thank you. One more event that I have to talk about is on the bottom of the flyer. It's called Do It in Durham. It started six years ago and it was about if you're going to start a business or grow a business or hire someone, do so in Durham. Um, I always see Durham as the most amazing opportunity that we have. It's the one area of the GTA that still has good land values. It still has a lot of opportunity, a lot of employment lands. So a lot of place for businesses to grow. So I'm excited that over the next 10 years, I, I think this will be the place. We have going to have two highways and have a lot of infrastructure issues, but we're going to be dealing with those as well. There's a lot of room to grow. So Do It In Durham is about celebrating entrepreneurship in the region. It's um, a week of 50 events. There's 50 events on the roster for this week, and they take place all across the region. So the object of when we put it together was about if you're in Pickering, then go to the events that are in Pickering. And if you're in Clarington, go to the ones that are in Clarington. People do travel around and go to all of them. We have about almost 1,500 people that attend during that week. So 90% um, of them are free of charge and really there for you to come out, celebrate, learn, connect with people, and find funders. We have a lot of people in this room that are presenting or, or part of that week as well. So you know, take advantage of it. So to get started, Frank, if I can invite you up. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good morning, guys. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys again for coming out this morning. We always know you have choice, but we are glad that you chose to be with us, especially since there's a summit going on this morning, and uh, I know some of you are going to head out there after as well. So, but thank you again for coming. I have the best job, actually. Uh, and no, I didn't take cannabis this morning, but uh, I was thinking about it. Maybe in the parking lot later. Um, Believe it or not, this is our 17th event, and uh, it, it's a wonderful series. And I think the reason uh, these are so popular is because people get to share their story and their journey with you. Uh, in the back of the room, we have uh, uh, Kevin Folk, who was our speaker last month, and he shared his journey. Uh, in that corner over there, we have Russ Montague, who's going to share his journey with you, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But I'm always on the lookout for some amazing speakers that can come out, share their story, the good and the bad, and inspire us to kick down, down, down doors. 
Uh, I ran into Audrey as, uh, well, those of you who know me, I love animals especially cats more than my wife or, or people. Uh, yes, I did say it on the record, that's live, that's live. Thank you for recording this for my wife later on. Um, and I, we, myself and Cindy from the Humane Society went to see Audrey's company because they do our direct mail pieces. And I was blown away by when I walked into the, their building on the culture and just how everybody makes you feel special. And I'm not kidding, I would encourage you that if, I'm sure you'll send an invite out. And, and Cindy and I were really, really, really blown away because we had never met our direct marketing company, if you will. So we said, hey, uh, you know, I asked her, and then we connected on the magazine side. I used to be in the magazine business, and Audrey was with a lot of the magazines that I actually used to distribute. So I asked her if she would be uh, willing to come out here today, and of course she jumped at that, and uh, I'm really excited that you guys are going to be as well. So our 17th, uh, we're, our next one, of course, is November 14th, uh, but let me please share a little bit of uh, the bio on Audrey. Audrey is the founder and president uh, of Marketing Kitchen Inc., which is a direct mail and fulfillment production company specializing in helping companies acquire uh, re and retain donors and clients. Audrey started her professional sales career selling small classified ads at the back of magazines. Uh, and there were specialty interest magazines. And then, of course, moved into display ad sales for Canadian Gardening Magazine. After seven great years of selling advertising, she ventured into software sales and, quick, and was quick to realize that it was not something she enjoyed. So she begged her older brother, uh, Rob, to hire her in sales as his direct marketing production company, uh, the FSA Group. After six months of persistence, he finally caved, and uh, Audrey says this often refers to as her longest close ever, six months trying to convince her brother. While working for the FSA Group, Audrey built a solid roster of top tier clients, and contributed a solid book of business to the organization through her ability to build quality relationships, offering problem solutions, exceptional service, no shortage of fresh ideas. Uh, Audrey's often uh, identified by her clients not as a, a vendor, but as a trusted advisor or partner, and we can certainly attest that as a Humane Society of Durham region. After Audrey's brother, uh, sorry, took ill in 2011, FSA was purchased by a large printing and communications company, which I actually represented on the newsstand. Realizing that she thrived in a more entrepreneurial environment, Audrey made the bold choice to go out on her own, and in 2014, so only four short years ago, uh, she launched the Marketing Kitchen. With no shortage of direct marketing competition out there, of course, Marketing Kitchen has found success by putting the client at the heart of what they do and caring as much about the experience uh, for the end customer as they do about efficiency and execution. That's not to mention the culture, uh, the culture I was mentioning Hadri has built, where her employees feel as responsible for the success of their client's campaign as Audrey does. Her leadership has allowed her business to defy the odds and accomplish her business plan in three years versus the original five. So well done on that. In 2016, the Market Board of Trade awarded Audrey with the Entrepreneur of the Year, and this year, Marketing Kitchen won the York Region Small Business of the Year. Audrey is the Vice Chair of the Foundation Board for the Unionville Home Society and Co-Chair of their annual, gala, their annual Gala. She's actively involved with the uh, MS Society and is currently launching, which is very cool, her next venture called Cheeky Cards, uh, where all proceeds will support small, local, not-for-profit organizations, which I think is delightful. She and her husband live in Aurora, have recently become empty nesters with both kids away at university. In her spare time, she enjoys tennis, yoga, me too, any kind of boot camp, but her greatest employment comes from entertaining friends and family at the cottage up in Halls Lake. Audrey's fresh, creative, and inspiring energy has led to many speaking engagements, for example, Canada Post, the Canadian Professional Sales Association, and the University of Guelph. Today, she is here and going to share with us her energy and discuss what she feels are the fundamentals to success in sales and long-lasting business relationships. Please, help me to welcome Audrey to Durham Region. Good morning. Thank you, Frank, for that great introduction. Um, so as Frank told you, I, I met Frank last year, um, and I, I'm sure all of you know Frank. It's very hard to say no to Frank. Right, so we met and we instantly hit it off and um, we knew all these people in the publishing industry together and we must have talked for you know 30 minutes and poor Cindy was kind of like, okay, we're here to get this direct mail campaign going. 
Um, so a couple weeks later, Frank asked me to speak, and um, I, um, I was honoured. Uh, so here I am. Uh, so last year, I came out and heard Emma Harris speak. Was any, did anyone hear Emma Harris speak? She was amazing. I was like, wow, she was so dynamic and young, and, and she, she got Arlene to give her all that money on Dragon's Den, and she was so tenacious and, and persistent on, on her quest to launch Healthy Pets, and I was so impressed. And then I, I was busy and I couldn't make any of the other ones. And, and last month I heard Kevin Folk speak and I was like, oh my God, same thing. Like this guy invented a healthy vodka drink. Like that's like a dream. <laughs> like he's like, you know, and, and, and he brought samples and I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to top that? <laughs> Crack that sucker, sucker open around lunchtime when I left here. <laughs> um, I, uh, and, and Kevin too, great story, right? Persistent, working full time, calling those liquor stores in, in Alberta when he got home. And I was just like, wow, it's amazing. Um, and I'm going to get up there next month and I'm going to talk about filling your mailbox up with junk mail. Yes, <laughs> junk mail. Not nearly as exciting as, you know, uh, launching uh, Healthy Pets or, or an awesome vodka drink, but I'm gonna do my best. Um, so I just wanna sort of understand the room. I have chatted with some people here when I've um, come to the other two events. How many people are in sales? Sales? Lots. How many people own their own business? Oh, wow. Okay, awesome. Good, because I'm in sales and I own my own business, so this is perfect. Uh, so I'm going to sort of start from the beginning. Before I sold classified ads, I'd have to say my first sales job was waitressing. I was 18 years old, and waitressing and bartending is the ultimate foundation for a sales career. Right? You know the more you sell, the more you make. You know if you give great service, you're going to make more money. You know you learn how to deal with people, you learn how to deal with drunk people. Like it is such a great foundation to start a sales career. Um, I went to uh, the University of Western, I guess it's called Western now, um, where I waitressed and bartended um, at the Seeps and Barneys, two fine establishments in London if you <laughs> went to Western. Um, there I got this incredible political science degree. 30 years later, I still I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with it. But I got this degree, and then I moved to Whistler. And I lived in Whistler for a year. Um, I continued to waitress in Whistler, because that's what I knew how to do. But then I got this job working at Blackcomb Mountain, which is when Whistler, uh, Whistler Mountain and Blackcomb Mountain were still two mountains, in HR. I was 21 years old, and I was screening first round interviews for people to work on the mountain. I had no idea what I was doing. I guess it was that poli sci degree that got me this job, but I was like, okay. So I'd interview all these lifties. They were all from Australia. They had no money. And, and they were like, I need a job and I need a place to live. And I was like, you should have come with more money if you're gonna move to Canada. This is ridiculous. I just can't hand you over staff housing. And anyways, it was, it was a really interesting time. Um, but I only lasted a year in Whistler. Um, because I sucked at two things. I sucked at skiing and smoking pot. And honestly, you have to be good at one of those in 1990 to live in Whistler. And I guess it's sort of, you know, appropriate because today I can say that, you know, I tried pot in Whistler. So honestly, a whole year, I was on the blue runs and everyone I worked with was like on black, double black diamonds. Nobody would ski with me. I was like snow plowing to work. Like, I, I don't know why I couldn't get it. I took lessons and same with the smoking pot. I was like hacking up a lung all the time and I was just like, anyways, moved home. So fast forward, December 22nd, I, I moved home in the fall and I got, quickly got two waitressing jobs. And my dad comes home, and he, as Frank said, he owned a uh, special interest publishing company, Canadian Gardening, Canadian, uh, uh, Canadian Workshop, can, um, at that time, Cross Plus, Snow Goer, Water Goer. Frank knows all these magazines. He distributed them all. And he says, sweetie, I think you should go into sales. And I was like, no, no, I don't want, oh, sales, yuck. I'm going to pursue this HR thing. I was actually pretty good at it at Black Home. He's like, no. He goes, uh, Lorraine. My classified sales girl, she, uh, she um, resigned today, and um, I really think you should think about it. You know, small ads, back of the magazine, 
So I was like, mm, yeah, I don't think so. And he's like, okay, well, I kind of already told Jacqueline, the sales director, that you'd show up tomorrow for the interview. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, okay, sure. So I went for the interview. Jacqueline was eight and a half months pregnant. She was like, oh my God, I just need a live body in this position before I go on mat leave and have your dad take over the sales department. Um, so shockingly, I got the job. And, um, and then, you know, and the rest is history. I fell in love with sales. I was like, this is so cool. You can make as much money as you want as long as you're good at it. And, and you have some freedom and you can talk to people all day. And, and I loved it. And I um, went on and, and sold advertising for seven years and really enjoyed it. But then I thought, I want to try sell something else. So I went into software sales. Um, two large companies, didn't love it. IBM and Oracle, yeah. You know, I, I was okay, I was still in sales. Um, and that's when I started begging my brother for a job. I was like, come on, I can sell. It's, it's okay, I don't know what you do. I can figure it out, I'll learn. And, and I was actually kind of excited about selling a service. Um, you know, advertising, you can be the best salesperson in the world, but if L'Oreal decides to go all broadcast next year, um, you know, there's not much you can do if you're selling print. You can maybe get some slush fund dollars. Software sales, once it's implemented, you sell some after consulting. I was excited about selling something I could sell weekly, daily that you need, monthly. Um, so six months later, he finally hired me. October the 4th, 1999. October the 5th, 1999, I found out I was pregnant with my son. And I was like, ah, oh, bad timing. It's okay. <laughs> Short mat leave, all good. <laughs> Um, so I went on and had a, a great career at FSA. Um, I loved selling direct marketing services. I, I loved just servicing companies and, and, and fulfillment, and we had a call center, and it was awesome. Um, unfortunately, in 2011, my brother took ill, and he had to sell the company to a much larger company to take care of his family. And it was a, it was a good move you know, at the time, and, and the company that purchased us, they were also great. They were great to my family. They were great to me. Um, but I knew, having worked at IBM and Oracle, I didn't want to work for a large company. It was not my thing. Fast forward to 2013. Um, this business contact in the industry approaches me and he says, hey, I'm going to buy a fulfillment company and I want you to run it. And I was like, what? You want me to run it? All I know is how to sell. I can't run a company. And he's like, yeah, I'll buy it. We'll be 50-50 partners and, um, and you can uh, you know, buy in over time. And I was like, okay, yeah, cool. All right, I can do this. I thought about it and I thought about it and I was just about to say, yes, let's do it. And I was like, you know what? I am not partner material. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this by myself, on my own. But he gave me the confidence. I was like, he's going to like buy this company and let me run it? He thinks I can do this? Then I can do this. So I am, um, that, and, and that's kind of how it all started. I was just, you know, going to just continue just selling. I didn't think I would ever be an entrepreneur. I mean, my dad was an entrepreneur. My brother was an entrepreneur. So, hey, I might as well try this. Um, and I also thought I can sell. So if I can sell, then that's okay because I can hire good operations people and I can find a good bookkeeper and an accountant. But it's hard to find good salespeople. Um, so I started, charted the course. I incorporated Marketing Kitchen. I started figuring out some customers I could go after that I weren't, wasn't currently working with. And then in January 2014, I met a couple in Scarborough. And this couple owned a company called Yavello Mailing Services. And they were like textbook mom and pop shop. Um, she ran the front of the house, he ran the warehouse, um, but they weren't growing the business anymore. And they, um, you know, they, they, they weren't making any money. <laughs> and I, they were probably three, four months away from bankruptcy. But they had good employees, they had good equipment, and then their landlord sold the building on them. And boom, I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy your assets. I'm gonna buy your, take your equipment, right to employ your employees and the ability to, um, you know, the goodwill of your customer base. And then it just like went so fast. April 1st, I owned their assets. I resigned from my day job. And uh, then the company I was working for made me stay on a month. And I had this company that I now owned in Scarborough, and I was getting up at four in the morning because my old company didn't know what I was doing. I just resigned. I was going to Scarborough, 
and I was sitting at this desk going, I don't know what I'm doing. All I know is how to sell. So I was working there till nine, then I was driving to Mississauga, and I was like closing up all my accounts and training people. And at three o'clock, I was driving back to Scarborough, and I was working till nine. And my kids were young then too, and I was like, oh my God. Anyways, I, I said, I'm gonna laugh about this one day, and I am laughing about it now. And so I um, moved the business to Markham, because the, their building had sold, and um, got this great, 24,000 square foot facility at Highway 404 in Major McKenzie, and uh, just lucked into it. Um, we're still there today, it's still amazing. Um, yeah, first day of that April, I had a uh, total of eight employees. Today I have 30 employees, 30 amazing employees. Um, and, and really, it's, it's been awesome. I've had, I've had some rough days. I think the second day I owned that company, Yavello, where I owned their assets, I wasn't sure if I was gonna stay with the network guy and I didn't know that the previous owners hadn't paid the guy in a year, so he cut us off. That's it, no lifeline to the outside world other than our cell phones. And I was like, oh my God, we don't have email, we have nothing. I had a Marketing Kitchen email account, but I was still kind of using Yavello. And anyways, we, we survived it all and, and, and it's awesome. Um, but the entire time I was opening up this business, Marketing Kitchen and buying these assets, because I knew I was good at sales, I knew I could do this. Like I said, I could find the ops. I could find, I could figure everything else out if I could get customers and if I could sell people on coming to work for me and if I could sell vendors on um, giving me, you know, a bit longer to pay them, then this is going to really work. Um, and, you know, my husband and I, oh my God, we, we drew everything out on our line of credit, the cottage, the, like a lot on the house. Oh my God! I, actually, I say we. I mean me. I don't actually think he knows how in debt we really were. He's like super conservative, but he's like, sweetie, it's okay. We're gonna do this. You're gonna do this. I know. I have confidence in you. And I'm like, okay. You know, I go to the mailbox and RBC would say, you're pre-approved for a line of credit, ten thousand dollars. I'd be like, yes. Fill it out. Tangerine Bank, yes, $10,000, fill it out. Oh my God, we're so broke. Um, and, and you know, at that time, no offense, Conrad, but I don't think BDC wouldn't even loan me money. But they did, eventually. <laughs> Once I was moved in, they came and they gave me money at like 12% interest, and it was um, better than borrowing from my dad. So, um, anyways, it's been a great ride, and, um, but again, I'm here today to talk about sales, something I love, I love, I love. It took me a long time to get out of sales and actually start running the business and, and being more of an operations person. When I started the business, too, I looked at all my competitors, and they were all operations. Even my brother, he was an ops guy. He loved to, he was a terrible cold caller, he was a terrible salesman, he could close a deal but he was ops, and I thought, I'm actually gonna be the only business owner in this industry that is like a sales professional, and I'm gonna come at this business from a sales angle. It's gonna be all about the customer experience, and then I'm gonna optimize the operations and stuff, and, and, and that was really key to our success. Um, so I had a goal. I wanted to be, in five years, a $5 million company with 25 employees, and we hit that goal of five million in sales in two and a half years with 18 employees. So we was pretty happy. So it worked out really, really well. Um, so thank you. So um, let's talk about sales. This is my favorite topic. Um, three things I want to cover today that I think are the fundamentals. Being the expert, warm calling, and building relationships. And, and I gotta tell you, it's those relationships that I built in the previous 15 years in this industry that really, really, you know, has um, contributed to our success. But before I do that, we're gonna talk about my five pet peeves. Does anyone know what movie this picture's from? No, come on. Think Think 1980s, Ben Affleck, come on. Best movie ever, well not ever, but. Yeah, nobody knows, come on. It's not a bunch of millennials in here, like. Okay, uh, this, is, this is disappointing. <laughs> um, the boiler room. So does anyone remember that? This is such, you got it? 
Oh. Did you love it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's so good, right? It's good time to time. I know, me too. You get it on like the, one of those old movie channels, and I'm like, say to my husband, stop. I was like, oh God, here we go. The best line of that movie, when he's, they teach them how to sell. It's so good if you can ever find it. It's not even on Netflix. I was like, don't pitch the bitch. When he says that, when he's teaching him how to cold call, get the guy on the phone. So good. Okay. This picture has nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about. I just love this movie. It's the ultimate sales movie. Uh, get your sales staff, get pizza and beer on a Friday afternoon, find it somewhere. It was actually, it, The Wolf of Wall Street is also based on the same story. But. Um, five pet peeves. The dreaded drop-in. I hate when salespeople drop in, especially cold calling in my office. Especially now that I own a business, people actually want to see me. And I hate it. My, my office manager's like, oh, you have an appointment? No, yeah, she's not going to see you. Um, she's, she says to send her something really creative and fun in the mail, and then she might see you. But don't cold call her. Um, don't ask how I am. There is nothing worth then getting a phone call, you pick up the phone and you're like, hi, Audrey Jameson. Hi, Audrey, how are you today? You know, you're already cringing, right? You're like, oh, what are you gonna sell me? Um, you know, I like to have fun with them, I, I really do. Oh, yeah, not so good. I got in, oh my God, diarrhea, like bad. <laughs> like, like I've been on the toilet all morning at my office, honestly, <sighs> brutal. Brutal. You're lucky you caught me because you just kind of caught me between waves. <laughs> like, seriously, do that. Have some fun with them. Don't ask how you are. Nobody cares. You don't care. Uh, you know, it, it's like, just get to it. So, Audrey Jamison, I'm calling from Marketing Kitchen. We're like a leading direct mail company. We work in the, you know, like, tell them why you're calling. Don't mess around. You're just, you're getting their back up. All right, the no follow up. This is probably right up there with the dreaded drop in. Salespeople, yeah, I'll get back to you. I'll get you that answer. Yeah, I'm going to get you that. Okay, I'll, yeah, Frank, you know, I'm going to get back to you next week. I'll give you, send you those samples. I hate the no follow-up. Okay, funny story. Five years ago, I go to get an Audi, lease an Audi. I can't actually afford to buy it, but I can lease it. <laughs> and I sit down with the sales guy, and we're deals done, and he's showing me all, everything in the car. And I said to him, okay, when I put it in park, I want all the doors to unlock, because I always forget to hit the button and the kids are getting in and out, or I'm picking up customers. He goes, oh yeah, I don't, I don't know if we can do that. And we'd done our little test drive in it, and I'm like, okay, well, I need to find out. This is a pet peeve of mine. Put it in park, I want all the doors to unlock, even though the car's still running. Okay, I'll get back to you, he says. I'll, I'll talk to the service team, it's Saturday afternoon, they're not in, I will email you this week or I'll call you. I'm like, great, never heard from him. Four years later, three months before my lease is up, he calls me, hey, it's Paul from Uptown Audi, how are you? Your lease is up in three months. I'm like, yeah, great. He says, I said, you know what, Paul? You never called me. You never emailed me on if the doors would all unlock when I put it in park and the car was still running. No, I already leased a new Audi from Faf Motors in Newmarket. I am not leasing from you for that only reason, because you never followed up. Oh my God, I wish I could have seen the look on his face. <laughs> like He was like, okay. All right, thank you. But I'm thinking, maybe, just maybe, he'll remember to follow up. Even if he didn't know the answer, he should have just called. I hate that. Okay, a knowledgeable rep. I hate people that don't know everything about what they're selling, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, and you've got to have personality and a sense of humor. People do business with people they like, right? We like it. Nobody wants to be you know, sold to, everybody wants to buy, you, you want to interact with people you like, it's so important. So be likable. All right, that's the only negative part of this entire presentation, I promise. <laughs> um, all right, you got to be the expert. You have to know everything about what you sell and in your industry. You have to be the go-to person. You have to solve your customers' problems. And, I, and I'm amazed at the amount of people that don't do this, that don't know everything. I'll get back to you. I mean, sometimes you do have to get back to everyone, but you have to add value all the time. It's just, it's, it's so important. And we all know that we love dealing with people that know everything, that just can answer the question and, and like you said, add extra value. And you know, you know when you sit down at a restaurant and you're like, sit down and you say to the waitress, so what's good here? And she's like, oh, oh my God, we are so known for our burgers. They are the best thing on the menu. If you, if you like burgers, have the burger. Um, but if you don't feel like a burger, 
and you want to have a salad, this is the one you want. It's our signature salad. Like, you love that, right? You're like, thank you. Okay, awesome. I'm having the salad or I'm having the burger. Um, both of my kids are at the University of Guelph, and, and last week we went, um, took them to the keg. And, and we're no stranger to the keg. I worked at three of them. We go there all the time, and, and we sit down, and we don't even need menus. But all of a sudden, my husband's like, I don't know, maybe it's a whole empty nester thing. He's shaking it up, and he's like, looks at the menu, and he goes, I'm not, I'm not having the keg classic today. I'm having something different. He says to the waitress, how is your uh, blue cheese filet mignon? Is it any good? And the waitress says, Oh, um, I'm like vegan, so I don't really like eat meat. Um, and and I'm, I, 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 my kids are looking at me like, oh my God, mom, don't go there, don't go there. Oh no, no, oh, this is bad. This is no good. And, and, I, and I, I look at the kids and I'm thinking, all right, we actually want to come back and take you guys out for dinner. This could be a classmate of yours. I'm not going there, but come on, fake it. It's, yeah, you know, it's a little heavy, I don't know, a lot of blue cheese, not, not probably our most popular dish, like anything. You know, anyhow, I just, you gotta, you know, sometimes you gotta fake it till you make it too, a little bit. And um, It's like, think of great customer experiences you have. Like, you know when you go into like Lululemon, right? Everyone's so happy in there. They're all like, hi, Frank, how are you? You know, they're all comfy because they're in their Lulus and they're running shoes. And, and like I walk in, I'm like, hi, uh, I want a pair of pants that's gonna make my ass look good. And she's like, okay, yeah, all right, here you go. These are the best. You want this, this. They're so knowledgeable and they're so happy to be there, right? Across the hall at Upper Canada, you got Aritzia and these girls are all like <laughs> sucked into these dresses that don't fit them and high heels and they're all cranky and go back to Lulu and they're all happy. It's like the Apple store too. You go in there, everyone's so happy and knowledgeable. Has anyone ever used the Genius Bar at the Apple store? Yeah. Like they're geniuses, right? These kids are 15 bucks an hour. They're like, yeah, okay, here's the problem. They fix it. And then they're like, oh yeah. And, and they look at their watch and they're like, oh, you got 10 more minutes on your time. I'm just going to like defrag your hard drive and oh, you got this and this app's running in behind and that's why your computer's slow. And you're like, oh my God. This is amazing and free. Like, and I think it's one of the reasons the Apple store is always so busy and I don't know, they're just so knowledgeable. So remember that, like know everything. I have people call me that aren't allowed to use me because we're not in their preferred vendor list. They're like, uh, can you just help me out with a postage situation? I know you're the postage expert. I'm like, sure, of course, yes, anything. I am the expert. Um, all right, now I think you get the point, right? Be the expert. <laughs> Moving on. Warm calling. So I don't want to call it cold calling. Everyone hates cold calling. Warm calling. It's just easier, right? Warm them up. Um, I, I don't know what industry you guys are in, and every industry is different, but you got to create a system, some kind of system that's going to work for you, a, a grouping of, of, of sort of processes you go through to get people, um, uh, you know, to eventually take an appointment from you. Um, First thing, okay, come on. If you guys don't know what this movie is from, I'm gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God, that guy's here because he's the only one. <laughs> um, classic movie, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. So before you start your warm calling, we need a list, right? We need the Glengarry leads. These are like the golden leads. This is a stack of leads that everybody wanted. Um, so I'm like, create a list. Just 20, 30 prospects. Just get them down. Who do you want to target? You know, do, I use ACT. If anybody is in software sales, ACT, it's so old. It's so good. It's so simple. I love it, right? Salesforce, I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to plug in my leads. And, but ACT is so good. And use an Excel spreadsheet, Outlook. Get a list, you know, and then just hammer away at it and devise a plan against these. Number one way I find leads, if I want to, let's say it's Sun Life and I, and I want to get to their direct marketing manager, I just Google direct marketing manager Sun Life. It either leads me to an article they've spoken about, leads me to their LinkedIn page, something, get their names. You know, creep people on LinkedIn. Don't be creepy on LinkedIn, but creep people on LinkedIn, right? Figure out who they are, get your nice list together, put your plan together. Um, and really, you know, once you get a list, you're going to nail one in 20 probably. That's why you have to go in with the mindset, maybe one in 10. But one in 20 for sure, you're going to get an appointment. It's, the math always works, like that 80-20 rule always works, one in 20. And it's so funny because 
Um, I was using a temp agency because we're super busy right now, and a temp agency calls us, how are those temps I sent? And I said, oh, you know what? Three of them were a dud, but oh my God, that guy Ramnick, awesome. I'm keeping him, you know, we'll, we'll keep him through you for the next eight weeks. She's like, yeah, you know, one in 20 are decent. And I was like, you're so right too. And it was, thank God we, we got one in four, so we were lucky. Um, also, befriending the receptionist, you always hear this. It's so true, right? Chatter up a little, him up, whoever answers the phone. You know, don't tell them you want to connect with someone on the phone. Just say, I want to send something out. Can't remember the guy's name. He runs this department. It's just get your list together. There's so many great ways to get people's names these days. Um, and then this is what I like to do. So this is why I call it warm calling, because I warm them up before I call them. Um, and I do fun things. Uh, now, we're in marketing, so we can do fun things. We're also in printing, so we can print fun things. But, you know, you can just use Vista Print. Um, we, have, we have this funny postcard. I went to a restaurant, and they had all these great postcards, and I was like, I'm so stealing that idea. So we have this, like, fun postcard that we send people, and you know, I just send a quick note who I am, what value I'm going to add. Um, another card we send, I mean, we've got a million of these, literally go on Shutterstock, I buy an image, I put a tagline on it, and I print it, and I send them out. And I send them in these, like, fun brown paper bag envelopes, because this lands on your desk, you actually open it. And I basically say, you know, we're doing a lot of work in your industry, we've got cool ideas, we're, um, you know, I want to bring some prototypes over, like, it's all about them, it's how I'm going to make them look good, and I say, I'm going to call you next week, and they expect the call. If you send something funny, they're, they're probably going to maybe take your call, probably not, but at least you know it's, a, it's warm, right? It's a process. It's going to take five or six times. I think Louise said when she was here in February, it takes 40 times to touch points to finally close a sale or something crazy. I thought 40 was a bit much, but most people bail at one, so <laughs> I've bailed at one before too. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, all right. This is really important. So when I was learning how to play golf, um, which I also suck at, not as bad as skiing, but um, my golf instructor said, when you're putting, picture a hoop around the hole. Just picture that hoop. Don't aim for the hole. But you could seriously get the ball in the hoop, right? The hoop is in the center of the hole, and, and almost like the hoop is the hole. All you have to do is get that ball inside the hoop. That's it. Don't go for the hole. Do not go for the hole. And I was like, okay, all right, that makes sense, right? And then you can putt in once you're within the hoop. Same in sales. Don't go for the close if you get them on the phone. You just want to further the process. You want to get, your you want to get an appointment, really, if, if you're local and that's what you can do. If, if geography is a problem, you want to get the next call. So think of that as, as your hoop. You just want to get the appointment. Don't try and close them on the email or what you're sending them or on that call. Get inside the hoop and then putt in after that. Um, and then you got to have this great elevator pitch ready, right? You got to have this, um, you know, call. Like I'm like, hi, it's it's Audrey Jameson. I'm I'm calling from Marketing Kitchen. Uh, we're a um, you know direct marketing production company. We specialize in the not-for-profit industry. Uh, just that runs some really cool campaigns. In fact, the results have exceeded uh, what our clients thought they were going to do. I've got some, also some really neat prototypes that I've come up with. And uh, I just want to pop in, show you the campaigns we've done, show you some cool prototypes that no one's done yet. Um, I'm in Mississauga next Tuesday. I've got a couple appointments in Mississauga, so I'm in your area, and I'm also back Thursday morning. I'm not in Mississauga next Tuesday or Thursday, but I don't want them to feel like I'm going to drive all the way from Markham to Mississauga, and then they're going to have to spend an hour with me. They're going to spend an hour with me, but I'm just going to pretend like I'm popping in for 10 minutes. And I'll tell you what, they're going to spend an hour with me later. <laughs> so remember that. And then send something useful, right? So back to being the expert. So we created, because we sell, for mail, we created this guide. It's like Canada Post for Dummies. Um, it has everything you need to know. The rates of all the classifications you mail in, the sizes, what's new, what you can mail, what you can't mail. And we send this out. Um, and our customers love it. In fact, they're calling me now. Is the 2019 guide ready? Like, they love this. I know it's all available on the internet, 
the Canada Post website is, is offering. In fact, it's so funny that the general manager of sales for Canada Post called me and said, can I have 250 of your books? <laughs> Seriously, dude, the stuff's from your website. I literally copied the PDFs and I put them in a book. <laughs> Anyways, I'm like, yeah, it's gonna cost you though. So uh, we actually do a lot of speaking engagements for Canada Post on direct mail and get a lot of leads from them. So we're very nice to them. Not right now, because they're probably gonna strike, but most of the time. Um, the other thing we do is we do this great calendar. Yeah, physical calendar. My kids are like, who uses a calendar, mom? You know you have one on your phone, right? I'm like, no, I like to have one on my desk and so do other people. I mean, you can see the whole month. Um, we put every month on a different kind of paper stock because that's what we do, right? We print mail and I'm like, you know, do you want to run that, Frank? Do you want to run that next campaign on 60 pound or 70 pound? And you're like, what? And I'm like, okay, June is on 60, September's on 70. Which paper do you like? People are like, oh, that's awesome. I love this calendar. Same thing, right? In December, people are like, can I get that calendar? Um, we send out 10 useful tips. Um, we also created this funny um, emoticon. Um, and, and Frank brought his today. I thought that was so cute. Um, so we created this little emoticon calendar. It was for prospecting. Every you know flip chart has, um, you know, I'm on fire. I'm hangry today. You just leave it on your desk. I'm on vacation. I'm working from home. So we have some fun with it. We have some fun with prospecting. You need to. Uh, but you also need to establish yourself as the expert. I'm gonna do it for time. All right, good. Moving on. Oops, that's not moving on, that's moving backwards. Um, okay, this is good. <laughs> Last call. So you've done your five or six. I mean, really, five or six times, you email, you call, you send something, you send something useful. Well, at some point, you gotta know when you fail. So we created this, like, I'm not really stalking you card, and then you open it, it says, ah, I kind of am. And so one of my sales reps, Janice, who's worked for, we've worked together forever. She, she actually taught me what I knew at my brother's company. Um, I wanted Mervis Productions, and I wanted Mervis Productions back, and I kept getting all their mailings, and I'm like, oh my God, Janice, get an appointment with this guy. I keep getting all these mailings, and so she tried, she tried, like, you know, eight months, nine months, send them stuff, call, another guy, call, leave messages. So she sends this card and she says, Dear Chris, um, I sent you out a few things. I left a couple messages. I know you're busy. My boss is going to fire me if I don't get an appointment. She said, You don't have to buy from me. Just let me see you. Just let me prove it and see you. And she put her business card in and he sent her an email and she got the appointment. Um, yeah, she got it. Now let me tell you. Um, one of the things I was going to say about being different, going and seeing people, we bake a banana bread every time we go see a new customer. Homemade chocolate chip banana bread. And um, I said to Janice, you're going to take a banana bread. And Janice like sucks at baking. She's terrible. <laughs> she usually picks up stuff, not Tim Hortons. Don't pick up Tim Hortons. No Tim Bits. No meeting with Tim Bits. Go to a bakery, find something different, no Tim Bits. Um, so, Janice, um, I, so I, bought, I baked the banana bread for her because I was actually pretty happy she got my appointment. She went in, she brought the banana bread, she had a great appointment. Four months ago, we've now done 12 campaigns for Mervish. So, you know, so on that last call, go for broke, who cares, right? If they're not buying from you, you have nothing to lose. That's where one of them comes in handy, right? You got, <laughs> just go for it. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Again, don't annoy people. Don't be useless. Right? Think like that. What do they want? You know, what do they want? So I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, Sent out a direct mail campaign, 2006 or 2007. Put Stephen Bevis on my list. He's the owner of Golf Town. Just have a glass of water for this one. And my phone rings, and I look over, and it says Golf Town, and I'm like, oh my god, my husband's in construction, so he doesn't have a phone on him. And I'm like, what's he buy? Like, I go pick it up. I'm like, Audrey speaking. Hi, Audrey. This is uh, Stephen Bevis, the president of Golf Town. I got your direct mail case. I'm like, is this someone shitting me? Like, honestly, thought, like, there's no way you'd get to call me. This guy, like, you know, was the founder of Aiken Heads. He sold it for millions to Home Depot. Like, he is not calling me from a direct mail case. Sure enough, he was calling me from a direct mail case. I was wondering if uh, you could come in this afternoon. I want to talk to you about your inbound call center. So, you know, typical entrepreneur, right? Like, I need you, and I need you now. Like, come here, because the wave's going to leave me in a few minutes, and I'm not going to need your services. 
So I'm like, okay, sure, yeah. And I like, I had on this like ugly blouse and like just bad pants, and I was, like, I was not ready to leave the office today. Like, bought a blazer from one of the girls, and Golf Town was really close to us while we were in Markham, their head office. Get to Golf Town, go into the basement where their offices are. I go in the boardroom and I sit down, and, and it was weird, right? It was the world's worst, ugliest boardroom. It was so bad, no windows, bad tables, not what you would expect. And, and I go in one door and that receptionist sits me down and then he comes in like the secret other door and he sits down and he's like, hi. I'm like, hi. And I'm like, wow, you found an Aiken heads. And, um, and then he kind of gulped down. So we shake hands and he says, all right, I need an inbound call center. Those are my salespeople on the floor, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, yeah, we can do that. We're close by. And great. I says, okay, come back to me or something. Perfect. So I go back to the office and I don't know what I was thinking. I've been in sales a while. I like write this proposal, like, I don't know, 20 pages, word doc, write, take a template, give them all these ideas and everything, call back, get booked an appointment with them, go back in and see them. I have my big word document, I have his copy, he sits down, and we sit together, bad boards him again, he comes in the secret door, and we sit down and I go through it with them. And he's like, da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, we can do this, we can do that, and, and then we can do this, and I'm going into the details, now, he doesn't want the details. He wanted me to come in and go, okay, yeah, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to call center, we're going to do this, we're going to run the phone like this, and here's the price, and this is what we can do, and it would take about mm, six weeks to lunch. That's what he wanted. He didn't want to go through my 20 page Word document. I did not put on my squirrel suit. I, I forgot who this guy was. I thought he was some you know, marketing coordinator, and I was going through it. Anyways, three pages into this Word document proposal, he gets up and he goes, I'm going to bring someone else in. I'm just like, oh my god. Like, talk about showing up and throwing up. Like, I was just like, oh, this is brutal. Anyways, I didn't, we did not get that account, but I learned a great lesson. Know who your audience is. And I, I don't know what I was thinking. So, you know, remember that, especially when you're cold calling and prospecting, like, what's going to add value to them? What do they want? What position are they in? Where are they? Are they the CEO? Are they the CFO? Do they want to save money? Um, and, and it's so important. And I didn't make a banana bread either. I should have brought a banana bread. <laughs> I was dumb. Okay, so that was sales, warm calling. Um, sales is about relationships. My business would not be as successful today if I hadn't cultured 15 years of amazing relationships, adding value, um, just always just doing a little extra for them. I, you know, luckily owning a company now, I, I can you know do stuff for free sometimes and help them out. Um, and, and we do little things all the time. Like we actually send a thank you card with all of our. So we have this things called John samples, or the samples of your mailing after it's gone out. We send them to you. So we send um, a thank you card with your John samples, and we, we put a bag of chocolates in it. We put um, we put. I go to Costco and buy Lindor's or Halloween candy. We put some lifesavers and some Worthers, and we do this little bag up, and we put it with your John samples, and we give you this card. And in the card it says. We are very thankful for your business and appreciate you choosing Marketing Kitchen. Tear this panel off and use this card to show someone your thanks. So, tear it off. We give them an extra envelope and now they have a brand new thank you card and they can show someone their thank you. And, um, and they love getting the chocolates. They love getting the chocolates so much that we're working with an agency with for Amnesty and the agency says to, or the Amnesty says to the agency, they were using two direct mail shops, asking someone else. They said, you know what? Give all that business to Marketing Kitchen. We love getting the chocolates in our junk samples. <laughs> okay, seriously. <laughs> How shallow are people? It's, but anyways, it works. So, but just, you know, building relationships, spending time with people, solving their problems. It's so important. Adding value. You know, people do business with people they like. Um, okay, I have to show this. It's not super relevant, but you always want to go that little extra, right? The chocolates are that little extra that we do. Anything else that we can do. Um, does anyone know what this is, this hotel? Anyone? Come on, right at the back, who's uh, helping me out the whole way. No, no one? Okay, I'm going to say it, and you guys are all going to go, ah. This is a Trump Hotel in Chicago. Favorite hotel in the entire world. And I have actually had the pleasure and the good fortune of staying at some really nice hotels in Ritz Carlton's. This hotel kicks ass. What I love about it, not only is it super luxurious in your room, you got like a roof stove and a sub-zero fridge and like a really dishwasher in every room, but they go a little extra all the time. So you, you get there, 
Um, and and it's, it, you know, it's all lovely. You go out for dinner and you come back, you've got a few glasses of wine and you kind of walk in and, and the room's all dim and classical music playing and your slippers are on this little towel in front of your bed and your robe is draped and they pull back the sheets and they have a bottle of water and they leave you a little motivational card. It's a business card on the other side, but and I'm like, I love this. Um, I just stayed there actually um, last week. I was at the Print Show in Chicago, and they, they're not doing the little cards anymore, but they're doing this big, you know, nothing is impossible. The word says I'm possible, and they give you the weather. And then someone else I was staying there got a different card. Um, I stayed there a lot because I was running the Harris Bank account for the, the large communication company, so they had a, a deal um, with the Trump. And uh, every time I came back, which was every month, I'd have a little card on the table from the general manager and a gift. It might be just like a bowl of fruit, a bowl of chocolates. On my birthday, it was a piece of cake. And a handwritten note, you know, thank you, Mrs. Jameson, for coming back to the Trump. There's a lot of choice in this city, and we appreciate your patronage. And I'm just like, it's just a little extra. I would like to call it seeding the lemon. Why do I call it seeding the lemon? If you've ever gone somewhere really nice for like high tea, like a really nice hotel, and, and you have your tea and they bring you slices of lemon, they seed the lemon. They take all the seeds out of a lemon. <laughs> and they, you notice that wherever you go somewhere really nice, seeding the lemon that extra little bit. It's, it's amazing. One night um, at the trunk, my book, I'm a page folder, and my book was on the nightstand, and the maid put a bookmark in my book where it was folded over. And, and you know, it's like, you know, reading is a basic tool in the living of a good life. And, and I just was like, I hate so tell. There's so many things they do, but remember to go that little extra. Um, okay, last slide on sales, referrals. Reward them, thank them. Thank you card and a gift card. Maybe not a gift card, you can't give a gift card, I always give a gift card. Um, referrals are the lifeblood of all of our business. You have to thank people all along the way, vendors, employees, everyone, my employees, we're so busy right now, they've been working like dogs. Got them all else, um, not SVO. Um, I'd like to get them all SVO gift cards, but they don't have like a drink. Um, and gas cards. And just say thank you all the time. I have recommended a thousand people on my street to the lady that threads my eyebrows. Like a thousand people. <laughs> Never once she said thank you. And I'm like, hey, Kathy comes to you. Yeah, she did. Yeah, okay. Moving on trip. And I'm just like, really? Nothing? Nothing? I got a free eyebrow threading? Like, come on. Anyways, um, you gotta reward it. Get a stack of cards, get a stack of thank you cards, get some stamps, have it ready. All right, I really do actually only have two more slides. You have to have a great website. That's where people go, right? Hey, friend, do you know about Marketing Kitchen? No, I don't. I'll go to their website. Simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Have some fun with it. Squarespace, super easy. Anybody can build a website. I have a great web designer if you need one. Just have a great, simple website. That is your number one selling tool. It's where everyone goes first. If you don't have a great website, get a great website. We did this exercise in, in my tech group, which is a group of CEOs. Um, we took the name of everyone's company and their logo off their website with the, with the speaker we had. He brought them in, 14 company owners, 14 websites. We couldn't guess anyone's website without their logo. They say it, like, like you're a 12 year old, what do we do? We provide ridiculously great direct mail and fulfillment services. I went back that day and changed my website. I was like, I cannot believe we couldn't guess anybody's website once we stripped out their logo and their company name. So, and have a good website. And you know what? You gotta have some fun. These are my employees. We have these pictures all through our office. We have them on our website. You gotta have a sense of humor if you wanna work with me. Um, have fun. Life is short. Enjoy sales. Have some fun. Um, so, um, because I was afraid nobody was gonna ask any questions, and, and Kevin last month Vodka. Um, <laughs> I baked banana breads. And you can have one if you ask an easy question. <laughs> ask an easy. Is it Weight Watcher Big Factor It is. It's whole wheat flour, uh, super low fat coconut oil. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, my question is. I'm a little long on the tooth, so I'm used to the cold calling in the relationships, but a lot of people like to be able to use emails or a phone call. If I don't get through to the chat the first time, do I leave a message? 
to extend an email and then how do you follow up? So how do you get, if, they, if they're in a cloud or a ghost, how do you get to them? Okay, well, that's not easy, but you're going to get a better <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. You, uh, first off, you're going to warm call them, right? You're going to send them something funny, card. I know, guys are always like, I can't send a card, that's a chick thing. It's not a chick thing. Send something. It, does, it could be an article, but something useful. Think of something useful. Um, leave a voicemail, 100%. You're never getting anyone live. We all know that, right? Leave a voicemail. Leave a value prop. Leave something why You're doing business with their competitor there. You, you've got something to show them. You want to see them for 10 minutes. Don't ever ask for an hour. They'll give you an hour. Let's see if you're drinking a banana bread. But don't ask for an hour. <laughs> Just ask to drop in. Then I would send them an email. Short email. Not a long email. Not Don't put eight attachments on it. Again, quick email, value prop. And you know, people don't want to give out email addresses. I think you can figure them out, right? Like Frank dot something, Frank's, you know, Audrey Jameson, A. Jameson. Try eight or nine different iterations of their name with the company. You'll figure it out. It doesn't matter if it bounces back. Um, and then send them something again. Call, um, you know, give it six or seven touch points, add some value. It's amazing. You're not going to get everyone, but you're definitely going to get one in 20, probably one in 10. And if you're not getting them, and you're not getting them, and you know maybe maybe linking with them, I kind of find linking creepy for that. Like if someone's trying me, trying me, trying me, and all of a sudden they like appear in my LinkedIn. But you know, just get creative. But definitely an email. Usually that's like my third or fourth touch point. I send them a quick email because it's really quick for us to just flip the email back. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll see ya. You know, it's hard to get on the phone and remember your number. So I, I definitely would use email for that. But I would be short, and I would have tried a couple other times to connect with them. Does that help? Uh, but send something fun. Have some fun with it. Anyone else? I got a lot of banana breads in here. Oh, yeah, you are so getting one anyways. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're self-proclaimed sales professional. So what was the biggest challenge taking on that, like, chief operating officer, doing that, that sort of other oh my God. Um, skill set that you didn't have? So what was the biggest challenge doing that part of it? Because it's important to do that part of it, too. That is such a great question, and I, I um, thank you for that. I don't even know if I'm there yet. Like, it was seriously, I sat down at that desk that first day, and I went, I don't know what to do. Like, I, I, all I did, I gravitated to sales. I still gravitate to sales all the time. There could be 10 operational issues and HR issues in my inbox. Oh, you want to quote? Okay, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Here you go. It's so hard um, to, to, to make that leap, and... Um, so I, I'm doing it. Um, I don't know if I have a good answer for you. It, you. I mean, you need to do it, right? It's like anything. Like you don't really have a choice. I think I find the finance aspect of the business the hardest to wrap my head around. You know, cost of goods sold and balance and and amortization. And I'm just like, whoa. But um, you do it, and you actually learn to like it. And, and even you know, dealing with the people issues within the business and stuff. Um, I think you get better at it over time, so you grab it, start to gravitate to it. But it was my hardest obstacle was to get out of selling 100% of my day and into operations because I just wanted to sell. I just wanted to meet customers, and and slowly as the business started making money, I was able to hire some people to help me out operationally and, and hand over the reins a little bit. But um, you, you just, I almost have to make a priority list in the morning and not turn my email on because we can all be so reactive with email. And I have a rule I can't go home at night if I have more than 20 emails in my inbox. And I'm like, so because that's going to do less. That means I haven't gotten back to someone. So I have to turn off my inbox, write all the operational issues I have to deal with, repairs on equipment, um, payroll, um, you know, new equipment I'm looking at. But I don't gravitate to it. And every day I gravitate back to sales, back to sales. So it, it's hard. I, I don't even have it mastered yet. So, so um, in relation to you have to hand these out, Frank. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Your, your, uh, oh, so <laughs> listen to this question. So I'm an operations person and I'm not a sales person. How would you encourage an operations person? To get into the sales because I could build, I could set up a company and um, I know the logistics and all that stuff. But how to sell my product? I have my product, but I don't know how to sell. Do you love your product? Yes, I love my product. I think when you love what you do, you kind of become a natural born salesperson because you're passionate about it. So get a list of who you want your customers to be, create a system, right? Okay, I send them this card. 
Then I'm going to call and I'm going to, you know, practice. Call your own voicemail and leave yourself a message. And you listen to how bad it sounds and then keep practicing it. Because it's true. It's bad, right? You're like, oh, I wouldn't call it back. So do that. Um, you have to kind of become a salesperson. I mean, hopefully eventually you can hire someone that loves sales. But if you love your business and you love what you do and you believe in your product, you kind of actually just become a salesperson. You just maybe have to work harder at it. So I would, I would create a system like, this is what I'm going to do. It's going to be very painful. It's like me on the operations side. It is painful. It is awful. Who we'll call it is awful, right? Rejection. What spoiler room? Um, it is awful, right? And you're just like, and you leave with like no confidence. You're like, nobody call me back. Nobody wants to deal with me. Two hangups. Like, and, and you feel rejected, and it's brutal. And then somebody calls you back, and somebody says they're going to see you. And it's like having a good shot in golf. You're like, I love this sport. This is awesome. Right? And, then, and then you get better at it. You really do get better at it. But it takes a lot. There's someone here. Frank, you got to like, take the bag around. <laughs> okay, Lisa. Thank um, you. So you said you were going to tell us why you spend an hour with the customer. And we haven't really asked. Oh, because I bring you banana bread. <laughs> yeah, so they feel so guilty. Honestly, they do. <laughs> Of the sales call, you know, like time to the conclusion or asking the questions or probing or seeing. Oh, okay, sorry. No, it's a good question. Um, because I don't even know. Like, I don't know how it's going to go. I do know I love to talk, and I know I need to shut up when I get there and get them talking instead of like showing up and throwing up. Right? You got to sit there and go, okay, tell me about your business. Tell me about your problem. Because I think we go in sometimes to a sales call already with the solution. I know what I'm going to sell you. So I don't even need to listen to you because I know what I want you to buy as opposed to actually really listening and I think that's all of our problems here. Um, so I go in and I, I really find out you know, what they're doing and if I push myself on them and they don't need me, it's even harder. It's easier when they're actually looking for someone and I just ask them about what they're doing and then I start showing them stuff we do. And then we just get into a conversation and then I ask them, you know, um, uh, you know is there anything that you know, you would like your current vendor to be doing that they're not doing. Um, is there anything that they do that you love? You know, and, and just build that relationship. I mean, 80% of the time, they probably don't use me right away, but I kind of keep sending them things, and eventually their relationship with their other vendor maybe hits a point where they've done some stuff wrong. But I think you just got to go in and ask questions, have a good list of questions ready, get the conversation going. The first appointment is really just about getting them to like you. That's it. Just getting them to hopefully see you again. Does that help at all? Okay. I think you were first thing. What, what do you feel is the key for making yourselves uh, stand out from your competition? Oh, um, we do things, everything we do at Marketing Kitchen, we do a little differently. Like, just we, when I send a quote out, if somebody's looking for something, we usually send an alternative, alternative idea as well to say, have you tried this? This is cheaper. Um, I think our expertise in saving people's postage also really helps us. <laughs> Um, I think that we, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We have a lot of fun helps us. Um, we really get great service. That helps, but it doesn't really help in the sales process because everyone's going to say they give great service. Um, I think we just bring unique ideas to the table right out of the gate. We try and get creative. Um, that's really it. it it's, and, and every sales call is so different. I think we, we can all attest to that, right? It never goes the same way. So you kind of got to go in with an idea of what you want to ask and probe um you know when i tell people we're different and they roll their eyes they're like yeah yeah that's what my last vendor said and you really got to just hopefully get one chance to prove it um that's really it just think of some fun unique things that you can send or do or talk about get them to remember you um when you're at the beginning and you have all these ideas you're having to juggle you being on your own how do you get how do you manage to think which one i can delegate um, yeah, I don't delegate anything. It's really bad. <laughs> so I don't sleep. You know, um, it's hard because we all think only we can do it and only we can do it the best and, and no one's going to do it better. And I'm, I have a business coach and I think it's the topic every day. Okay, what did you delegate? Nothing. Okay, what did you delegate? Yeah, nothing. What did you delegate? Oh, yeah, she's taking care of the cleaning lady now. She's going to go. Okay, it's hard. I, I think you have to actually make a list and go, okay, what can someone do as well or almost as good as me? And just go for it. But it, as an entrepreneur, a business owner walks on the table, it's really hard to delegate because 
We want to own it all. And, and that's the hardest thing. You've got to just make a list and really think about it and almost prioritize it. So if you can't delegate A's, B's, and C's kind of thing, go, okay, actually somebody could manage that. If I actually took the time to teach them, but sometimes you're like, I'll just do it, it's faster than I teaching them. Yeah. Say that all the time. Yeah, and then you do it, you know, every month, 12 months. I'm like that with payroll and like that with everything. I'm like, you know, if I'm that my office manager pay WSIB, I'm like, really? Not anybody can pay WSIB every month. <laughs> I shouldn't have to do this. But it's hard to delegate, make sure it gets done. You have to trust done people. Well. And done well. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I got two banana cakes left. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, gentlemen here, and then more of a comment, Audrey. Thanks for coming in today and speaking with us. It took one thing out of this today that I think we all need a little reminder of being yourself. Your enthusiasm is what's impressed me. You're just not afraid to just show your real personality. Thank you. Instead of just going in and always trying to be what you think they want you to be. And mm -hmm. I think it comes across better. I'll remember you because of that personality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you love what you do and you love what you're selling, it should come easy and you'll bring the energy. And when you're on the phone, smile. Even though you're on the phone, that though people will hear that smile on the other end. Yes, you have So every idea I have, I have stolen from someone. And so oh, you know that? None of them are original, not one, nothing, no. I've stolen it and made it better. But, <laughs> um, no, sometimes Janice, my, my I have two sales girls, Janice, really creative, right, really fun. I mean, only her could pull off that, my boss is going to fire me kind of thing. And um, she's super creative, too, so we get together. Um, I'm, I, you know, I go see lots of speakers and pull ideas, um, always, you know, taking pictures of ideas and stuff. Um, not so much get together. We usually get together and talk about operational issues because something's gone wrong. Like we're, we're still in startup mode a bit. We're very reactive. I want to get more proactive. Like we're so busy and we're so busy this time of the year. Um, and it's hard to get. And now is the time to be proactive when we're so busy and and, and you want to get this, you know, um, and change things. But we're like, okay, well, we're not as busy like in January. Um, then we'll get creative. Or, um, yeah, you just kind of do it. Just take pictures and, and do like postcards from a restaurant and just think of really creative ways to market yourself and your product. Because you're selling you, right? We're selling people. We're all individual business owners. And if we work for another company, we're selling me. I'm selling Audrey every day. Why you should trust me. Why I can build credit. How I can build credibility with you. So, thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming. Huh? Sorry, I just need one minute and then I will wish you a wonderful day because I know there's uh, some parties going on later on today, 1017. Um, <laughs> so listen, I, again, I just wanted to thank Audrey. I, uh, I, she is everything that I was hoping that it would be this morning and I'm delighted that you can join us, Audrey, and thank you for that. Uh, and I think you captured it best, so thank you. Um, listen, our next one is November 14. Uh, the gentleman in the back, Russ Montague. If you don't know Russ, Russ took a $2,000 loan from his father and turned it into 120 million US. He had to leave. He's gonna be our speaker November 14th, and he had the sixth world largest subscription box and one of the highest employers here in Durham region with over 100 employees, and he cashed out. So that's okay, you can cash out, that's part of the business. But anyway, please join us on the 14th of November. Uh, have a wonderful day, and please sell on. Cheers.